watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 9, covering the entire DMV. Winter storm leaving snow, sleet, and plenty of rain in the region. What areas are most affected and the chance for another system early this week? I really hope they find them. Puppy stolen, another dog napping in the district. Well, we know after eight dogs were taken and the latest from police. Plus, we're stretching your dollar the free fitness classes and gym visits to maintain those New Year's resolutions. And now all the warnings have been dropped, warnings, advisories, and watches, all of them are dropped, thankfully so, as the storm continues to move away from the region. We'll talk about Sunday's weather and beyond with my seven-day forecast. And good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9 this Saturday evening. I'm Ben Dennis. Starting in the district, eight puppies were stolen in broad daylight just today. The latest local dog napping, a crime that's increasingly being committed. DC News Now's Dave Laval reports from Southeast where neighbors are understandably on edge. The latest dog napping around the district happened along this stretch of U Street in the Anacostia neighborhood and involves eight puppies. I really hope they find him. Tierra Watkins is shocked to hear about the crime that happened near her mother's home Saturday. D.C. police say someone stole the dogs from inside an unlocked car. It's really sad. It's really disappointing that people can't have pets without somebody just trying to take something from them. Police told us the car had been left running behind a home when the theft of the dogs and the car happened. This is the second known case involving a stolen dog in the district in less than a week. Police reunited Lola Wednesday with her owner. Investigators told us someone brought Lola to the police station after two suspects took her New Year's Eve after they attacked her owner inside her southeast home. Police are still looking for the suspects and whoever took the puppy Saturday. Relieved. Thankful, blessed. Our cameras were there in November for a reunion between pet and owner as DC has faced scores of dog nappings in recent months. I don't know if people are, are selling them for profit or if people are just, you know, wanting to make pets from somebody else's pet. I'm not sure. Police did not release a description of the suspect, but anyone with information is asked to call D.C. police. In the Anacostia neighborhood, Dave Laval, D.C. News Now. Thanks to Dave tonight. That dog napping coming as police in D.C. say that they have arrested a man after he stole this French bulldog during an armed robbery. Happened back on December the 22nd. The victim listed her dog Mocha for sale online. When she attempted to meet up with the suspect, well, police say that that suspect had threatened to shoot her and took the dog. Mocha was reunited with her owner just last week. 24-year-old Kyrie Holmes of Southeast is charged with armed robbery. And taking a look around the DMV earlier today, conditions varied as the winter storm system moved through. Snow came down hard today in western Maryland. Northern Virginia saw some foggy and rainy conditions. In D.C., just rain and high winds today. Though, no S word, that's snow. But we got a live look of Reagan National Airport in northern Virginia. Time is 9.03. Over to meteorologist Scott Sumner, who's not only breaking down all that we saw today, it was the lions, the tigers, and the bears on our doorstep. <laughs> What's coming down the pike? All right, wind is coming down the pike here, Ben. Let's uh, recap, though, as we go in this hour of all uh, that we had with regard to snow. How about Cumberland topping out at 7 inches during the course of the afternoon? Originally, Maryland 6.6 .6 inches. Frostburg coming in with a 6-inch half a foot of uh, the white stuff. They're about 4 inches. Reagan National, well, you just had a little bit a trace but I also want to thank our weather watchers throughout the day bringing in video and bringing in photos well as you can see here I want to thank uh, Christy Eagle from Jugtown, Maryland. This is what it looked like in her front lawn as we went uh, throughout the afternoon. Right now, up in the Hagerstown area, we see the white there. We see the snow on the ground and some uh, wet pavement out there. It'll be a little bit slick, needless to say. Of course, here in Reagan National, uh, we're looking fine. The roads are not so wet. But the winds have picked up. Right now, we have wind gusts in and around Reagan National, about 20, 21 miles an hour or so. So a bit of a breeze outside this evening. And road conditions, as you can see, are sloppy across the area. So let's take a look at the headlines here. We have that storm moving north overnight tonight. Breezy mountain snow for Sunday. Dry on Monday. And a, another weather-worn day for Tuesday. I'll explain why coming up my main weather. Ben? 
All right, Scott, thank you. While those conditions were not good for travel today, plenty of folks spent quality time having fun in western Maryland where they got that steady white fluffy snow. For kids in Hagerstown, they passed the time sledding. We don't get a lot of snow usually, so it's like a one-time chance, and the snow is really nice, so it's like a lot of fun. It's a little scary because <laughs> we always fall, but I mean, it's freezing, but I mean, you get used to it after a while. It is really fun, though. Everyone loves the sled, right? Well, as that storm now moves out of our area, DC News now is dropping our first warm day alert for the rest of the night. But a quick reminder, you can always stay on top of any storm, any forecast with the DC News Now weather app. To download it, just scan that QR code that's right there on your screen in order to get the very latest information on your phone any day, any time. At your local news in Maryland, Prince George's County police say that a teenage boy died yesterday after the stolen minivan he was driving collided with a pickup truck. Officials say 15-year-old Sean Shelton died on scene near Piscataway Road in King Gallahan Court. It happened yesterday around noon. The teen riding in Shelton's car, we're told, was seriously injured in the crash. The driver of the pickup truck also injured, but his injury is considered non-life-threatening. Police said it appears that Shelton was driving the minivan the wrong way when he hit the pickup truck. The minivan had been reported stolen earlier the day out of Charles County. Back in the district, D.C. Fire and EMS responded to this very serious crash in southeast this afternoon. We're told it happened at the intersection of Branch Avenue and U Street around 1.30. Two people injured there, one with critical life-threatening injuries. No update on their condition at this hour. And in national news, federal officials ordering all Boeing 737 MAX 9 jetliners grounded until they're inspected. That comes after this Alaska Airlines plane suffered what officials call a blowout, left a gaping hole on the side of the plane while the plane was still in the sky. You can see some of that panic from passengers on your screen. They were already taking some of the oxygen. You can see that hole right there as they started to land. The required inspections will take around four to eight hours per each per aircraft and will affect about 171 airplanes worldwide. At this hour, one Alaskan airline flight between BWI has been canceled due to the grounding. We'll keep you updated. Construction work on George Washington Memorial Parkway is now complete for one stage. After months of work, drivers will see new traffic patterns on the southbound lanes. Trying to keep the same character and feel, but making sure everything is just as safe as possible for motorists. The most important thing is trying to adhere to that speed limit of 40 miles per hour. If they're going slow, they should be able to then see the new traffic pattern, ride it a few times, get comfortable with it. it now that the southbound lanes are done, similar work will begin on the northbound lanes. Metro is reminding riders to plan ahead for the rest of this weekend. That's because they'll be doing some infrastructure repairs on the red, blue, orange and silver lines. On the red line, free shuttle buses will replace trains between Noma and Brooklyn stations. Rhode Island Avenue station will also close. On the silver line, trains will only run between the Ashburn and Smithsonian stations. Many trains will only run every 15 to 18 minutes. The green and yellow lines will have extra trains running to accommodate riders. The changes will be in place through tomorrow. In Virginia, there's a push to raise pay for public school teachers. According to the latest data from the National Education Association, the average Virginia teacher makes just over $61,000 a year. That's more than $5,000 below the national average. So many teachers um, have, have just been leaving Virginia, primarily due to other states being more competitive or just Virginia not stepping up to the plate. If we can't have good teachers in those classrooms that care about the students that they're teaching, then we won't get that, that, that world premier education here in Virginia. Some outstanding questions about the cost as that debate looms. New tonight, a solution for the shortage of school crossing guards in Prince George's County, Maryland. Well, they're getting a little bit of help. Police officers now aiding children to get to school safely more broadly. The county executive says the plan will have officers covering locations that don't have crossing guards until they can hire them. The initiative also includes a massive recruiting effort, increasing pay to 17 bucks an hour, lowering the age requirement from 21 to 18. Officials say there are several reasons for the decline in crossing guards, including several retirements and pandemic related issues. This, of course, comes after two students were killed while walking to school in Prince George's County.